You take this notion of an entangled universe and you apply it to human experience because human experience is part of the universe as well. And then you say, well, let's, let's assume that experience is entangled, then how would it manifest? And we can start going through ways in which it could manifest. If there's a connection with another mind, we call it telepathy. If there's a connection to some other object somewhere else, we'd call it clairvoyance. If there's a connection that happens to transcend time, we'd call it precognition. If there's a connection in which my intention is expressed out in the world some way, we might call it psychokinesis or distant healing or something of that sort. So you can go through a list of perhaps 12 kinds of psychic experience that have gotten labels over the years, like telepathy, but this is really just the tip of the iceberg. People ask, why are you so interested in the Planck scale, the very ultimately tiny in terms of spirituality? Because obviously spirituality is, is out there, it's, it's everywhere. And the answer is that yes, the Planck scale is the ultimately small, but it's also everywhere, wherever you go, there it is. And because it's holographic, it repeats at different scales, like fractals, throughout the universe. I would say that what quantum physics is to the 20th century, whatever is going to be the new bridging of science and spirituality, that will be to the 21st century. We are all creating the future. We are all creating what is outside of us. None of us are innocent in that regard. If there's something out there we don't like, we can't really turn our backs on it because we're co-creators somehow or other. And we have to do the right things to try to get the future that is best for all of us. We have talked so far about the freedom of our own personal life and quantum physics that we are freeing and freeing and freeing our reality to ultimate realities. Yes, of course, they exist. But after we have accomplished them, what then, what next? When do we make the shift from me to one? When are we the subconscious mind? When are we the knowledge of the one transpersonal self? When you start to realize what your true nature is, there is no question, there is no answer anymore. And there is just sudden realization. Now you come back from the rabbit hole and you start to perform in this world of illusion and wonder and magic with that understanding that you're never going to die and you were never born. Choice by consciousness out of this possible events, the actual event of experience comes in. And so, for the first time, science encounters free will. Consciousness is free because there is no mathematical description of the subject. Only objects can be described mathematically, and only to the extent that there are possibilities. The question still remains paramount, who is the chooser? Are all realities existing simultaneously? Is there a possibility that all the tensors exist side by side? Flatland, a world of only two dimensions. Only forwards and backwards, left and right. In this world, there is no up and no down. I said to Ray, where's Dottie? He said, well, she's out in line. I said, well, uh, huh? What the bleep is that thing? Huh? In this world, the two-dimensional beings that live here have no concept of three-dimensional objects. 
these two-dimensional flatlanders have no understanding of cubes, spheres, tetrahedrons, or yours truly. From their 2D perspective, my 3D finger looks something like this. <gasps> what the letter does that? Hello, little circle. Uh -uh. Fear of the unknown. Or should I say, not yet known. It's a puzzle. If we see only what we know, how does anyone ever see anything new? The unknown. How do we ever get out of our box? Hello, little circle. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Who said that? Where are you? This is always the tricky part to explain. I am in another dimension, another space. I am above you. Ah! No, never, never use that word. What word? The A word. Above? Ah! Oh, it's forbidden. <laughs> well, what do you think it means? I don't know, and I don't want to know. You can be so punished if you use that word. <gasps> Are you a ghost? <laughs> I hope not. I just have a different perspective than you do. I can see things in a way you can't yet. Oh, yeah? Like what? Well, okay. You have a safe hidden in your pantry. <laughs> and inside it, you have 12 coins, a will, and a passport. How did you know that? What are you? Are you a god? Well, no more than you. You see, since I am above you, <laughs> in the third dimension, I can see inside things in your world. Third dimension? You are a crazy ghost. There's only two. Look. So, if I were to touch the inside of your stomach, how would I do that? Well, you'd have to cut through my skin. Otherwise, it's impossible. Stop! Stop! <laughs> Ready for more? More what? Dimensions. Oh. Directions. Uh, no! Yes, but... Oh. But there aren't any. More? What will happen to me? What will I become? You'd have to become it to know. Okay. Excellent. Oh. I never knew. Isn't it funny? That which we are most afraid of is what thrills us the most. That has the effect of randomizing their X spins and nothing else interesting happened to them after that. Okay. Um, good. It's an easy way to get a laugh here. So you can't ask them their opinion, because you know what they're going to tell you? You're starting to act different. I liked you better the other way. And that's a great sign that you're making a change. <laughs> you can edit that, though, if you had to, though, couldn't you? Not prettily. Not, yeah, not prettily. <laughs> <laughs>
Where, who can do the Heimlich? <laughs> okay, we